grinding up and incorporation of plant materials into the soil to suppress soil-borne diseases. And this is, occurs in the fallow period. Since the banning of key pesticides such as chlorpyrifos and neonicotinoids, it's become vital to find a biological control to control a key soil-borne pests, to suppress key soil-borne pests. Compounding the problem is the fact that rotations and resistant varieties are now becoming less effective to soil pests. So how has it been used in the UK? Now the key thing that's been controlled in the UK through biofumigation is nematodes. These increases stem nematodes, root knot nematode and the lesion nematode. But one example of it working effectively in the UK is through the potato cyst nematode. Now this, now this happens when the plant when uh, the brassicas are incorporated into the soil, now the, I see the ITCs from them are then used to, uh, it then uh, causes the nematodes to hatch early. This means that because there's no host to them, they die and starve. And the usual mix for a biofumigation crop would be say 60% uh, all seed radish, 20% carbon kale hybrid and 20% mustard. And this is broadcast onto a seedbed at about 20 kilograms per hectare. Now most advanced, most advantages of biofumigation focus around the soil. One advantage is that it uh, recycles nitrogen. So because brassicas are nitrogen heavy, they take it up into the soil, take it up from the soil. But when they're reincorporated, it means it's put back into the soil. And most farmers have found that they have more nitrogen after than before it. Therefore, it reduces nitrogen on preceding crops. Um, it can also, uh, but some farmers argue that it can create a, a bridge for diseases such as club root. But the main benefit is in the control of nematodes, where 8.8%, um, where they can take 8.8% of a crop in the UK, and this figure is twice as high in a developing country. Now, varietal uh, resistance is becoming less effective. Um, therefore, with nematodes, um, such as lesion nematodes, it can be 100% effective in some cases. It can also help to control soil erosion and increase water retention. Uh, tap roots, I mean this one's not very good, but as you can see, it's, <laughs> they're pretty poor roots on this one, but in general, roots go pretty far into the soil. This helps us cycles, <laughs> cycle nutrients. And, and increase the sort of general raw nutrients. Um, carbon input also increases by three and a half times compared to a normal crop such as wheat. However, there are major limitations. For example, there's only a 14 day window to incorporate it into the soil. For many farmers, they might not have time, particularly if it's in the summer. And this means it's less effective. It's also not effective on heavier soils because they have organic matter. The organic matter sticks, help, uh, the ITC sticks to organic matter, meaning it's less effective against nematodes. There's also some evidence to suggest that inoculum, uh, that the inoculum from the plants, then feeds uh, uh, pathogens, which causes more disease. And on top of this, some farmers have used um, soil solarization as a new method in foreign countries to kill. To use, the plant, to use light energy at the peak of summer to kill all, uh, all insects in the soil. And also the cost. For the most effective form of biofumigation, you need a summer crop, and this can cost four to 500 pounds per hectare. So on balance, biofumigation is an effective tool to, to suppress soil-borne pests, but its future significance all depends on its applicability and its cost-effectiveness. Thanks for listening.